Hit record. <clears throat> What's up, you beautiful freaks? The Nobody's Podcast is brought to you by High Octane Training. And I have right here sitting with me, uh, owner of High Octane Training, Joel. He's our special guest, filling in for Nelson. And he's going to share more about his company and what he does and how he does it. So let's get right into this. Get your game face on. It's game time. Oh, that's hilarious. Bruno Mars kicking it off, and I've got here the owner of High Octane Training, and I want to ask you, why did you pick that song, Joel? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to put me on the spot right away, but I don't know. There's something about that song. I've actually watched that YouTube video about 10 times. Seriously? I have no idea why. Yeah. There's something about that song. I heard it in the car one day, and I was like, oh, this is kind of like... Michael Jackson, Jackson 5-ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw the video, and I was like, oh, I'm kind of right if you watch the video. And then, I don't know, there's something about that, there's something about that song, it's kind of funny, actually. There's funny, that, yeah. Hey, thanks for giving away my, uh, <laughs> my secrets here. <laughs> Nobody needed to know that, but, uh. Yeah, no, we, we always want to pay homage to, uh, our guests and their choice of music, and, you know, um, Joel is a Filipino background, just like myself, we're, um, honorary cousins we have been uh, best buds for a long time yep. and uh, we just love anything canadian we love anything filipino so bruno mars is at the top of our hit list <laughs> minus the canadian <laughs> yeah absolutely but i mean filipinos worldwide know who we are and what we do and, and we pump whatever we got going on right yeah. so that's karaoke true. that's true yeah <laughs> that's true in fact i was asking him today i was like have you ever been to a Filipino restaurant? And I'm just wondering if it does any justice to good old mom and mom home cooking, you know? And I just, I'm kind of curious to go to one. So any listeners out there that have one or that know of one, send those in because I want to go try one. Absolutely. We know of one locally, but I'm not sure that it's still around. So if we get the name, we'll throw it out there. Um, but you know when you eat Filipino food, you know, growing up every day, like, you just don't think of going to a restaurant to have the same thing. Yeah. Right? But as you branch out and your tastes... Uh, you know, they change and you start cooking different things. You start to miss yeah. stuff you're not always getting. Yeah, yeah. This so whole if thing, you can get it, you get it. This whole thing started with, I was watching Friends and and uh, there was an episode where uh, Ross was going to China. And Joey's like, are you going to eat Chinese food? And then Chandler said, well, over there it's just called food. <laughs> so I, I laughed about that. And then I thought to, my, I thought, I thought to myself, I'm like, so if we, take our, if we take our parents to a Filipino restaurant... Do we just say we're just going to a restaurant, not yeah. a restaurant? Yeah, we're just going out to for Yeah, we're just going out for what they cook. You know what I mean? That's so, hilarious. That's what I was wondering. That's this whole thing started how I wanted to like kind of go to a Filipino restaurant and compare it. So. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Okay, let me uh, put you on the spot. Name yeah. as many popular worldwide international sensation, Filipino sensations oh. as you can. Bruno Mars, who else? Oh, I'm going to get busted for this. Start guaranteed. with the fighters. Start with the fighters. The fighters. Uh, Brandon Vera. Yep. Um, wrecking Machine. Yeah. Mark Munoz. Mark Munoz. Yeah. Filipino Wrecking Machine. Um, Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought you were going to put that. I was going to ask him. Joel, the, the Joel, has, Joel has uh, Filipino boxing gloves hanging from his uh, rear view mirror there. It's tremendous. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Filipino. That, but, that that girl that's that, that sang on one of the Disney movies, Clarice. Okay. Ariane uh, Celeste has Filipino background. Does she? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, UFC Ari- ring, right? Sorry, whoever's listening, you're, I'm probably you're probably gonna chastise me for this. Uh, Charisse didn't sing. Uh, she's on um, Glee. Oh, she is. Yeah, she's on Glee. Oh, tremendous. Um, who's the one that uh, got co- um, found on YouTube? She was 14 years old. She sang the Gaga song. Her. Oh, it's her. Yeah, that's. Oh, her. wow. She's, she's on Glee now. Yeah, she's on Glee. Good for her. Oh, um, the lead singer Journey. My yeah, favorite band. Right. My favorite band. <laughs> you went there uh, this uh, last summer, right? Oh yeah, I, I went. I took my parents, and my parents are close to. They're sixty nine years old now. Uh-huh. And I took them to their first concert. It was a Journey concert. What a great son. Yeah, but you know what? Honestly, my mom was like, it's too loud, and can you tell these people to sit down? And it was awesome. It was such a good experience, but I was into it. I was getting up, and I didn't oh, care for sure. Watching. It was fun. And then there's something about that song, right? Like, you know, once Don't it stop gets believing. going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's oh, an yeah. anthem. Awesome. So, how did he do? Who? Oh. It makes you want to get up and skip and... The hairs on your arm, oh. just, you know, on the back of your neck just stand yeah. up. 
Well, let's face it, I'm Filipino. I don't have hair on the back of my head. So, um, so does he sound just like him? Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. Do you know the story behind that? Yeah, he... He was, um... He was just, like, kind of like... I don't want to say a cocktail, cocktail singer, but... He was just doing a lot of cover stuff in the Philippines. Right. And somebody recorded it, and Journey at the time... Neil Schott is their uh, guitarist. He was looking through Facebook, looking for a replacement for the lead singer of uh, Steve Stevie Perry, and uh, came across this guy. Emailed all his uh, fellow band members and says, "You got to check out this guy. We got to fly him in." And that was it. That's amazing. I'm just looking it up now. His name's Arnel Panetta, and uh, he actually had a career in the Philippines beginning in the '80s. Mm. and then uh, caught on since 2007 with Journey. So that's awesome when he can just step in, fill right in. Oh, yeah. yeah. Honestly, he was on Oprah, and you could just see, like, all the Filipino... You could hear the Filipino community all over the world cheering for <laughs> It was for my mom. My mom's favorite band's Journey. She has no idea what they sing. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, that's that's her favorite band. Yeah, there's nothing like it when you hear a fellow Pinoy uh, making it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know any other. Prouder. I don't know any other famous like off the top of my head. That's okay. This can be an ongoing thing. It doesn't have to be the one episode uh, dedication no. to. <laughs> See the way the way the way Neil and I talk, we will come back. Like I guarantee, at the end of the show, I'll have three more. Okay, it'll just come up right. We could be talking about I don't know. We could talk, be talking about football, then I'll just yell at an eight. <laughs> so it'll just be. Yeah, it'll just be kind of like that. Awesome, awesome. So speaking of which, speaking of which, I just want to give a shout out to Pura BJJ because they raised. Seven hundred dollars for the typhoon victims out there. So, oh, that's amazing! So I'm happy um, to hear that. Yeah, what, if, what did they do? Uh, we, because I trained there, and we did a open roll, kind of a rollathon. So whoever co- wanted to come in and train from different schools. So this is a local and prominent uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu club. Yeah. Um, the head of it is uh, PJ. Uh, yep. And uh, just does tremendous work. They've done a number of these things, very touching in the community. Um. They've had uh, members of the club and other clubs in syndication where they heard, like, you know, one fella uh, was losing his sight. His eyesight, yeah, in uh, Australia. Yep. So uh, they, they gave a shout-out to us. They're kind of like a, a pair, like um, kind of a brother club. So they're under the same banner as us, under the Mendez brothers. And uh, he reached out to us. He said, listen, uh, one of the guys here is losing his eyesight. And I've actually trained with that guy. Super nice guy. So he said, is there any way we can raise funds? So... We had another rollathon last year around the same time and raised money for him too. So that's amazing. Um, well, I'm really happy to hear that. Doing yeah. great things in the community, and uh, they have an excellent uh, kids program uh, where um, uh, they're taking kids as young as as four. So, what do you think the role of martial arts in a young person's life is? Oh, I right. wish I did this. I wish I did this years ago. Like, you know, I mean, like, you know, I was even telling you that. Uh, it's, it's not so much about, you know, fighting and all this stuff and getting in shape. Yeah, that's a great byproduct of it. But I think that it really brings a person out. So we've had kids who are, you know, introverts who just didn't really speak, who are really shy to now they're greeting, ki- now they're greeting like the adults at the school. You know, they, some, some of them work there now, volunteer their time because um, they love all that. So, um, I you just said think, they're greeting, uh, they work, they come really introverted, they're really shy, yeah, and then they, they and then they, they break out of their shell. Like, I think that, um, um, a big part of who I am, and especially with athletes, uh, they learn a lot of their, they learn a lot of their traits through, through teams and through social, social, uh, settings, gatherings, settings, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Stuff like that, so. The best thing that I've always be- believed that you could do with the kids is to expose them to other. You know, kids, other people from other walks of life, and get yeah. them, you know, out there and socializing, right? When um, when you isolate yourself, that's one of the toughest things you can do. And oh, for and, sure, yeah, absolutely, it, it's great to see. And I think that Pure does a great job of uh, focusing on their kids' programs too. Not to mention their adults' programs. They have a big, big um, competition team that travels all over the place to compete in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and it's really taken notice. We've had a lot of. Uh, UFC guys come through the door to come train with us and to learn a few things. So Right. Um, but you don't have to go there if you want to compete in fighting necessarily. Right. It can be a fitness 100%, goal as well. 100%. A lot of guys... So can, how long have you been in um, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I've been training for close to three years now. Okay. Close to three. Um, and right now I'm a blue belt. I'm hoping to go, go further with that. But um, yeah, it's it's been awesome. I've just been... it's when I, when I stopped playing football, I needed to replace something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I used I used this to to kind of occupy my time. It's just taken up 
all my time. So much so I quit my job <laughs> to do it. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So the passion is there. Right? Yeah, I quit my job and I, I decided to start my own. Um, as Neil said, uh, I have high octane training and all that good stuff. But I kind of built it around my passion for, for helping people, for training people. Yeah. And uh, jiu-jitsu is right up that alley. So You've I, always had a knack for that. I, I got to say, Joel has been a tremendous... A teacher. When I was growing up, I aspired actually to go into teaching myself. And when uh, I was just thinking about it, I had a lot of teachers say that, you know, you're going in at the right time and there'll be a lot of retirements and you're going to get work. So lo and behold, I finished university and I'm worried about getting a job, then going to teacher's college and coming out with a lot of student debt. And I'm thinking, man, I'm not going to get a teaching job. The teachers that said they were going to retire were holding them longer. And I started to expand my thinking about that. I'm like, you know, teaching doesn't just happen in the school boards, in the schools. Mm -hmm. Teaching happens every day in anything you do now, right? Like, basically, you're not going to get a well-paying job if you can't express or teach other people Mm -hmm. something worthwhile. So Joel is a tremendous teacher, and he's done it on different levels from fitness and training, which we're going to get into. Uh, He now does it with uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and and he's just an overall great guy. He's a... He he actually instructs his uh, nephews too at uh, at the uh, at Pura and um, uh, you know I think he being able to do that with a relative or someone you love to is just yeah uh, I can see how proud you are of yeah him. for sure yeah of, of a, the boys it's yeah. a tough line though I'll be honest with you T- teaching my nephew and having family there while you're training sounds great but sometimes I tell you that I just <laughs> want to be so much harder on him than any of the other kids. All the other kids, I'm like, yeah, yeah, good job. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, you, what are you, what are you doing? You know, but I also gotta, I also gotta remember that my nephew just wants to be there to have fun and meet That's kids right. and, yeah. and do what Uncle Joel does. So I That's can't really right. be that hard on him because um, he can't really. I don't want to take the fun out of jujitsu for him, right? Yeah, exactly. Because uh, I think we have a tendency to use a teaching style that our parents use with us. Like my, my dad was really tough when it came to sports yeah. in particular basketball, um, growing up. So I have a tendency to talk to my teammates, my brother, you yeah. know, like friends in the same way, but I'm lacking the, the, um, the thought that, you know what, maybe they didn't come up with the same, mm-hmm. uh, upbringing or coaching or teaching style as I did. Not everybody responds to that. Mm-hmm. And that's something I think you really understand. Yeah. And by the way, it's not just me that, that teaches Neil. I'll tell you a story that I don't know if Neil knows about this yet. So I played football as well, just like Neil did. And I played, you know, Pee Wee, uh, Pop Warner and all that stuff. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with football and when I got into high school. So it was grade nine. And I'm looking through, I'm reading the newspaper before I go to school and looking through it. And I'm looking at the local sports because of how heavily involved I am. I was with, with sports at the time. And I look on the new front news, and player of the week, holding a football... Was Neil. I go, and I go, what? I go, what is going on here? Like, Neil, like, I... Is he... You know what? If he can do it, I can do it. So he plays... So then I started playing because of this guy right here. And then later on, fast forward, like, ten years later, I'm out west playing football and... All that stuff. So he, I'm not the only, I'm not the only educator here. I think that, and I think that <laughs> it's, just, it's just a big testament. To, um, I think it's just a big testament who, who, you know, um, how close we are. Yeah, absolutely. We've always been able to push each other and uh, and not hold anything back. We always uh, wanted the best for each other, and and that's you know, like as long as you were happy, I was always happy with what you were doing. But yeah. I think your lot right now, doing what you do is the happiest I've ever seen. Oh, thanks, man. Right? Thanks. You've, uh, Joel's left a, uh, a pretty good position and he's jumped out of his comfort zone and taken a real big risk uh, going ahead and, and basically owning and operating his own uh, uh, company. So we want to um, talk about that. High Octane Training, uh, which you and Sep, like, I guess, put together since last year or so? Yeah, it's been on and off for a year. <laughs> um, I kind of decided to... My training background started about 10 years ago, but I really just decided to go on my own about last year while I was still in my career mm-hmm. in marketing. After that, I decided to get out of that and just kind of break away. And after many talks with a lot of people, including Neil, I decided to just branch off and just start doing my own thing. And since then, like Neil said, I haven't been happier. I just, 
for any advice of people out there that who are scared to take a risk, fear is just something in your head. So always just take that leap. leap, take the leap of faith. And if it doesn't work, there's always a net to catch you in the bottom. So and what did I tell you at that point? Frankly, you're gonna it, once you make that, you're gonna do everything you have to to yeah, survive. And, it's true. and some people act or or you know they perform better when they're in that survival mode. When you're a little too comfortable, and sometimes comfort and and um, uh, success are killers of, of a hard work ethic, you know, like mm-hmm. being comfortable. Like, you have to get out of that range and, and find stuff about yourself that you just never thought you could do. And I, I see you doing it, and like I said, I've never seen you happier. Yeah. So what are the day-to-day things that you do now, like, that, that keep you busy? Not only busy, but what are you doing exactly? Uh, I nap. No, I'm just kidding. I nap, <laughs> I nap, I nap a lot. <laughs> I nap a lot. He checks his email. I check my email. <laughs> was a cop. Oh, face. Honestly, I I could be twenty four hours on Facebook. I think. <laughs> I think. Just no. I um. I get up. Uh-huh. I, I, I find myself now these days. Actually, I'm a morning person, which is crazy. I, I never thought. Yep. So uh, I get up. Uh, have have breakfast, and then I head down to the gym, um, and train uh, myself. If not clients, in between clients, I will train myself, and then. Towards the end of the day, towards the end of the night, I'll uh, head over to Pure to train myself or to coach the kids or to coach adults, uh, to teach classes and stuff like that. So that's really it. Monday to Friday, I'm in the gym either training others or training myself, or training jujitsu, training others or training training uh, myself, and trying to build a business that way through marketing, social media, and all that stuff. So I wasn't really kidding about Facebook because I am on <laughs> a lot. A lot. You, you've had some really successful boot camps. What do you, yeah. what do you what do you do exactly there? Our boot camp is uh, our boot camp is pretty high intensity. Um, so uh, we, I like to follow a kind of a circuit style training uh, where it's a total body total body boot camp, but it's high intensity. Um, don't let that scare you though. For those who are don't want high intensity, um, it's timed. So I like to just let other people go at their let other people go at their own pace. I mean, so if I know that you're capable of more, yeah, I'll push you, but. If you're new to boot camps and stuff like that, I just want you to enjoy yourself. So I think the biggest thing is is that um, have fun at the camp. So I like to pick exercises that aren't either just you know redundant. Uh, I like to use total body stuff. So for instance, you're gonna take a sledgehammer and just start whacking a tire with it. You know, for 45 seconds, let's say. Uh, you can do mountain climbers. Uh, you know, we have sleds there that you could push around and sandbags you could throw and stuff like that. So a lot of fun, functional exercises. I think that a lot of people fall off the wagon because it just becomes redundant. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that that's the biggest thing. So come January, I'm holding another boot camp. It's back to the grind boot camp. Um, but that one I think is, is going to be a lot of fun. It's twice a week. So a lot of the girls who are in it, are gonna, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna work. They're gonna work off that turkey and all the, <laughs> and all the <laughs> shuffles and all yeah. the, yeah. So and don't, and keep in mind though, like everybody's human. Trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm dipping into the chocolate too. I'm gonna be part of that boot camp. I That's, tell you, it's I'm gonna, gonna have to work myself too. It's inevitable. Well, the one thing that I know, I, I work uh, briefly in fitness myself, and I think a lot of folks come in intimidated. Um, thinking that they can't do this, it's new to them, they can't try this. And I believe that fitness is, there's such a traditional way to look at it before. It was like um, guys on steroids, bodybuilders. And and I think there's a misconception that as as soon as you lift the weight, you're going to head in the direction of being like this muscle man or muscle woman, muscle lady, right? But it's not like that. Even the traditional fitness trainer now, is more about like a, a healthy overall yeah, lifestyle. Exactly. The look of a trainer is not these guys in like bulging out of these polo shirts. Mm-hmm. They look, uh, you know, just quite fit. You know, and being fit doesn't mean you have to be like bulky. Um, you know, and and I think people overlook the fact that when you are getting started in something, you got to do what you enjoy. And mm-hmm. and Joel certainly makes it enjoyable. So when he says things like hitting a tire or pulling a sled or throwing a sandbag. You'd be surprised at how fun and how simple it is to do. You just got to get out and try it. So if- oh yeah, I was mm. in. I was in the. I was in. Uh, the sports supplement industry, dealing with a lot of bodybuilders and everything. And you guys will be surprised how 
much of that market has dropped right because right. of exactly what, what you said because the athlete sponsorships are not the muscle it's not that anymore. anymore it's it's yeah. it's funny if you look at if you look at like say 10, 10 years ago 15 years ago the Mr. Olympia show in Las Vegas mm-hmm. was packed tickets were so expensive you can even get one okay now apparently i haven't gone in a couple of years but now apparently you know it's not as busy as it used to be mm-hmm. and I think that the reason is, is because that market has fallen off and a lot of people aren't appealed towards that mar- towards that look anymore. Right. I think that if you take if you take a look at let's say a bodybuilder, a uh, CrossFit guy, an MMA fighter, a triathlete, a lot of people will kind of in order. I wouldn't say in order, but I bet you a lot of people wouldn't pick the bodybuilder to look like. You know. Yeah, absolutely, and I don't think it ever was, but. Um it's just that whole culture, and I think at the time too, like in the '80s, they had the release of Body um, Pumping Iron, yeah. Pumping Iron Two, and and you know it's just like this culture. It, it seems so foreign. It's like yeah. you're, you're bringing California to, to Canada, and yeah. you know that the beach body idea. And well, um, if you look at if you look at like magazines like Men's Health, it's not so much bodybuilders anymore. Like on the not, cover, you'll see guys yeah. like Mark Wahlberg and right, you know uh, Wesley right. Snipes and LL yeah. Cool J, guys like that who are you know, it's achievable to get naturally. Right. A lot of bodybuilders, let's face it, aren't that natural. So they, yeah. you know, a lot of people are kind of either intimidated by it, don't want it. Right. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, the body that I want is the one that the girls want, to be honest. Like, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna get the ones that girls are like, wow, he's got a great body, not the one that was like, uh, he's yeah. big. So, so yeah, I, I, I have to agree with Neil. And if you look at a lot of sports supplement companies these days, they're... they're they're sponsoring guys like UFC fighters who aren't bodybuilders. They're sponsoring a lot of guys like mm-hmm. football players in the NFL who aren't bodybuilders. And a lot of girls who are, you know, actresses. A lot of actresses are getting sponsorships through sports supplements because yeah. of their body. Yeah. Right? And dealing with athletes, it's not so much even the athlete themselves. It's what they bring to the table. So if there's an athlete that is very active on social media or very approachable when you see them, I'd rather take that athlete over a high profile guy or girl who isn't approachable, who just kind of sits in their shell and, you know, who's had bad media. Right. So, um, so just to agree with Neil, I think that, yeah, I think that he's, he's right. Is that the bodies have changed. And I think that it's not about being as big as you can be anymore. And, and, uh, women just want to, you know, just tone up and yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. Like there's, and you're definitely the trend going on when you've got at-home workout videos, which they've always had, but you've seen the P90X uh, success. We've talked about Sean T and the George St. Pierre Rush Fit program. Can you tell us what you know about the TRX training and, and the craze that's CrossFit? And, and do you do any of that actually yourself? Actually, I just finished you know? doing my TRX workout this morning. Okay, um, what, is it ex- what does it stand for? What is it? <laughs> I don't know what it stands for. Okay, we'll look at it. Up. Yeah, let's look that up. Okay. Um, but TRX was designed by the military. So it's basically straps with handles that you can hook onto anything. Trees, doorways, anything you want. And the military designed it kind of as a as a portable compact gym. But what happened was is that you can do a ton of exercises on it. So it's all suspension training, it's called. Okay. So suspension training meaning you're, it's hanging from something for you to do your exercise. But it's a lot of body weight and gravity workouts. So it's a ton of fun. It's a great way to do a workout. Like I finished doing a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament and work in training for one that ended two weeks ago. So now I'm just kind of taking it a little lighter and stuff like that. So I'm not lifting heavy. I'm not going to crazy, you know, functional cardio workouts. So doing a doing a TRX workout for me is is recovery as well as just maintaining too. So I love the TRX workouts. CrossFit I tried once. Um, I did well in it, but man, it's a workout. I'm not going to be biased and say, you know, it's amazing or it's 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 garbage. It has its benefits. Um, it has its, it has its ups and downs. Like it's a great workout. Right. But the thing is, if you don't know how to do the exercises properly or if the gym or CrossFitters call their gyms boxes. It's a very cult thing. I don't know. So... <laughs> If you don't pick the right box to train at, um, well, it just might hurt. not be for you. Yeah, yeah, you can get hurt because some of those there's some advanced movements, very advanced, like ballistic, like right. your whole body's going. So okay, um, it can be it can be challenging, and 
But at the same time, if you know how to do it and you know your body properly, um, I think it's a great workout. Oh, and the people look tremendous when they're doing it. Like, yeah. It's just, it incorporates really what looks like to me the, the cardio plus the weight resistant. Yeah. And it's Olympic lifting, some of the lifts? A lot of it's Olympic. Yeah, some of it. Some of it's And don't, Olympic. again, don't, when we say Olympic lifting, when we categorize or use the name, don't be discouraged by it because anything worth doing or anything that you can do, you might have fun in the novelty of trying it. And they're all very manageable things. You don't have to do them on a professional level is mm-hmm. the point, right? Mm-hmm. So, but did, you enjoyed it. Oh, I, I did because I kind of understood it. Uh-huh. Um, if I was brand new to fitness, I would have found it a bit intimidating to be honest. But okay. I kind of knew my thing and the, the people that I was doing it with have done CrossFit for years. Oh, sure. So, uh, go walking in there, never lifting a weight, kind of not understanding it. Yeah, I would have been a little bit. I would have been a little bit intimidated. And um, what was I going to say? Uh, the uh, well, this does it look like I'm getting a sponsorship for CrossFit anytime soon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the TRX is really in a suspension type training uh, where you do um, uh, movements and and you're using cable work and and so on, working mm-hmm. against the cable resistance. So I'm gonna get Neil to post a picture on a blog of what a TRX looks like, so you guys understand. Okay, no problem. So I want to ask you this. This is something we visited a couple uh, episodes ago. Um, okay. A, uh, a mom who, who's a, a CrossFit mom, it seems to be. Anyway, she's in tremendous shape. She took a picture of her in her, basically her tank top and, and her shorts. Okay. And she's in tremendous shape. Yep. She's got three kids, three okay. years old, two years old, and an eight-month-old. Okay. And the headline says, what's your excuse and a lot of backlash came out about that. And basically the phrase, yeah, was coined uh, fat shaming. And it's a term used by obese people or heavy people to avoid the responsibility of actually taking proper care of their body and instead victimize themselves by pretending they're discriminated by, you know, something like it, a group or, or a picture or mm-hmm. something like that. So... This picture, which is incredible, it's a, a, a woman in awesome shape, obviously dedicated the time and the, and whatever she needed, all while raising three kids, she got a lot of backlash about this, and no. a couple bloggers or, or people chiming in on this picture mm-hmm. accused her of fat shaming, of making them feel bad, you know, and, and questioning mm-hmm. their reasons why they didn't go and get up and get started, you know, whether they had the three kids or not, or, or whatever, but... Um, I don't know. What do you think of that? Do you see that? Do you think no. that's a problem? Do you agree with it? I think that I think that this picture mm-hmm. um, we're looking at right now. I don't think it's bad. I think that it's good. It, I think the intention of the, the picture was just what's your excuse is to make you think, not to make you feel bad. Absolutely. And let's face it, a lot of all of us, if not okay, so most, if not all, have always wanted to get in shape. I don't right. know one person that said I do not care about getting in shape. I do not care about my health. Absolutely. So basically, that is what's your excuse? Like, it's not, I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. I think that, I think that it should be. I think that it's it's fine. I think it's actually a great ad. I think I like it. Yeah, can, but can you believe now that this is getting misconstrued as like um, putting people down that can't get into shape or or supposedly can't get into shape for whatever reason that they have? I think that I think that those people. And we could be honest here, right? Like, yeah. Okay. So okay. I think that those people. This is all about honesty. <laughs> okay. So I should throw the script that I've been reading from. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. No. Um, I, I think that those people who have said that, whatever fat shaming or whatever it's called, and those people who have been offended by this picture, I think that have other have you know I don't want to say inner problems because I don't know these people. However, I think that they have an excuse and that their fear of working out. And they're taking it out on this picture. I really think that everybody has an excuse who's not working out. Yeah. So whether it's a legitimate excuse, then fine. What is your excuse? Right. If you say you physically cannot work out, I understand. Right. Then those people should not be offended. Right. But I think the people that are offended by what's your excuse have all the excuses in the world. I'm too busy. My kids. Yeah. You know, um, I have no time. I love food too much. Chocolate. Whatever. Well, those are bad excuses. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I think those are the people that are getting offended. But if you physically can't, like, I don't know. I, I, I've i seen ads and have met people um, in wheelchairs who can't yes. work out, who have who have yes. gone the extra mile to do their best efforts to get in shape. Yep. And I guarantee that those people, 
mm-hmm. have never used the excuse of being in a wheelchair. Ever. Absolutely. Yeah, a good friend of mine who you know, Chandler. Yep. Yep. Tremendous. He's, he's been in a wheelchair you know, most of his uh, life, mm-hmm. certainly his adult life. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, he's, con- he, he's in a wheelchair, but he, he can walk. He uses a parachute system, goes down to uh, McMaster University. Um, it's like a parachute system that keeps his upper body and supports his upper body. Mm-hmm. And you know what? All it takes is the first steps. That's it. Right? He might do five to ten minutes and he's sweating and, and he's going mm-hmm. crazy, but even he f- tells me he feels the difference with just a little bit of work. And and the guy can't, you know, he can't walk uh, without the support of either, like, um, hand crutches or the wheelchair. But he, he makes the effort and, you know... It always was a reality check for me, spending time with him. Uh, he's been a real inspiration for me that I, uh, you know, if I felt like I had a bad day or I was, like, lazy or something like that, I'm like, look to what you don't have and the people that work through that, right? And you don't have an excuse at the end of the day, And you if know? And if I met Chandler, <laughs> and I met Chandler for the first time, mm-hmm. um, and I must say, the first 10 minutes I met this guy, I completely forgot he was in a wheelchair. Exactly. You just have any, a any interaction that I'd had with him, oh. it's just like you, he lived life as though he had never been in a wheelchair and had no disadvantages, exactly. period, right? In fact, <laughs> yeah. Chandler, first time I met this guy, was dancing with the hottest girl. <laughs> and what was I doing? I was on my phone on Facebook <laughs> checking checking my news feed. This guy's dancing up a store in a wheelchair with the hottest girl. And the they were, they were his, coming to him. Yeah. yeah, and they were coming to him. And the girl was sitting on his lap and he's just wheeling them around like dancing. And what am I doing? I am in pure envy. So, yeah. so that just goes to show that there really is no excuse. And I guarantee that because that I guarantee that he's even forgotten he's in a wheelchair. I yeah, bet you it doesn't yeah. affect the guy. They'll never, no. they'll never raise it on you. It never came up as a conversation. No, you know, and it, it's just the, like the most amazing way to live. So, so that poster of mm-hmm. people bad, like the backlash. I guarantee it's the people who do have excuses that are. Yeah, it's so, a front. Right? That, yeah, as so. you know, I just don't like it. I don't like to do this. Well, you know, there's always ways to do it. There's always a way to exercise. Yeah, you know, go for a walk for twenty minutes outside. You know. Um, yeah. Uh, buy a home video. Right. It'll work at your own pace, but... Be comfortable yeah. in your own home, right? Exactly. You know, that kind of thing, so... Exactly. Even the little bits, but get up, you know, get dressed, get moving, and that's it. That motion will create something. Yeah, really, like, right? I I think that, I think that, um, that, I've seen worse, to be honest with you. I've seen worse where I'm like, I've seen... I've seen ads where I'm like, I can't believe that people have gotten away with this. Right. That is nothing compared to what I've seen in the fitness industry and stuff like that. So. Have you had a really difficult instance or a special scenario where you've trained someone that you had to work around or overcome a fear or, or maybe a handicap or disability or anything like that? Um, anything unique um, or a special goal, you know, that you just even would stretch the limits of... You're thinking, and... Yeah, I mean, I do it all the time at jiu-jitsu where kids are so quiet and, you know, you're kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, kids are very fragile individuals where you don't, you can say one thing, it'll it'll affect them for the rest of the day, if not for a longer time. Sure. So you really got to pick your words wisely, but their, their parents, sometimes, you know, you see tears in their eyes from their kids accomplishing a new goal, like yeah. a new belt or doing yeah. a move or... Arm barring, arm, arm barring me and me tapping to them to their, you know, their parents love it when their kids tap out Joel, you know, like, <laughs> those kids are five and they're starting to tap me out. So, yeah, um, yeah, I deal with it all the time, even at the gym. I mean, I've dealt with, I've dealt with, uh, kids who, you know, their parents are like, you know, he's just not a strong skater. He can't do this. He can't do that. And next thing I know, I keep, I hear that, you know, the kids got drafted to like AAA hockey, you know, like mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I've, I've dealt with it, and it's it's a fine line. Like everybody's got to remember that even trainers started somewhere, right? That's so right. we know what they're going through. Like yep. I remember walking into the local gym, and when I was like thirteen, fourteen years old, right, just being so intimidated, like yeah. seeing all these big guys. I'm like, what am I doing here? Blah blah blah. And all it took was for me to get one person to tell me what to do and how to do it and what my goals are, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Really, like so. Uh, speaking of the gym, great story. I thought about this today, actually, because okay. I just finished training. <laughs> Neil, do you remember the time that we were working out together? And Neil over here 
is a very strong fellow who was benching three plates on each side. <laughs> By the way... That means nothing to them. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. No, it does. <laughs> so, those big three 45-pound plates, three of those on each side. So, if my master's me correctly, 180 on each side, right? Yeah, 315 pounds. 315, right. Okay. Um, which, big shout-out to Chris Rankin, got nowhere near that. <laughs> okay. So, okay. um... We have an internal competition amongst friends. Yeah. So, um... Big guy here asked me if I can spot him <laughs> on 315. Do you know where this is going? I think you fell on me and we got stuck. I fell on him <laughs> in 69 position. <laughs> and pinned me down with the weight on my chest. Yeah. And we were both done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. So... I laughed about that today because oh, um, I was telling I was telling my my fellow trainers at, at my gym uh, that story. <laughs> we're all laughing, but that's funny. I thought that that was a good time to tell them. So yeah, like a spotting technique is really to help the bar move wherever I get stuck. I was in a bench press, so you're lying down flat on your back, pushing a bar, you know, lowering it to your chest, and you know, pushing it straight up, like almost like you're punching with two hands uh, at the same time. So Joel would stand over top of me. And guide the bar to make sure that it's constantly moving. I think he must have slipped forward. <laughs> and then it was like he was pushing the bar into my chest. And uh, I don't know, there had to be four or five guys who had to lift. One lift Joel off and then two or three to, to yeah. bring the weights back up. Yeah. I, I thought I had to call CAA to get that weight <laughs> off. That was crazy. So it doesn't matter how versed you are in the gym. You know, dangerous things can happen yeah, too. Right? for sure. So um, you... Uh, you have a, a lot of experience, not in just the traditional forms of training, but the sports-specific training. Yeah. And how do you find, what's the difference between teaching someone to use the machines and lift weights versus someone that is training specifically to be a top-notch hockey player, a great football player, right, or improve their tennis um, footwork and, you know, how, yeah. they, they say functional a lot. So. Yeah. So... The reason is, okay, so the difference between a regular, you know, person, it's all about goals. We can all train like athletes, but it's really what our goals are. So I would say the average person in fitness is more aesthetic looking. So they want to lose 15 pounds or they want to gain 20 or, you know, they just want to tone. Yeah. As for an athlete, he doesn't care, he or she doesn't care how they look. They want to be able to be perform the best they can be either on the field or on the ice or on the court or on, you know, anything like that. So right. uh, what we do is, or what sports specific training is, is that they focus strictly on the movements of that specific sport to strengthen their movements, rehabilitate any injuries, um, get them re basically ready for the upcoming season. So for instance, hockey players are a unique bunch because the way that they skate is a completely, and the way they shoot and all that stuff, it's a completely abnormal movement throughout the day. Mm -hmm. None of us ever walk in side strides. None of us ever twist like we're going to take a slap shot. If right. we have to get something from the, from, the, from the cupboards, we just walk over there, get it. But what they do is that in order to take a slap shot, they've got to twist their torso still facing forward. So their flexibility has to be huge. Right. Their knees have to be protected because of the ice, right. stuff like that. But as for an average person, they don't care. They just want to look good. Right, so their workouts are going to be completely different, right? So, um, yeah, I think that sports specific is more geared towards um, the sport, right? And uh, take football for example. A lot of people don't ever say, "Oh my God, that offensive lineman looks great." Like really, <laughs> they don't. Like really, they're big guys and they love it. Yeah. The reason is because they get paid millions to look like that. Right. So we're so as sports specific trainers or strength and conditioning coaches. Our goal is to just maintain their strength and get them playing and healthy as long as they can during the season. Right. They don't care how they look. Yeah. But the average person will say, you know, I don't drop 20 pounds and I want to look good. I don't want to feel great. So that's right. the difference. That was the biggest difference. For the and the, the difference in the exercise has to be a tremendous amount of difference because you're yeah. doing a you know, series of general conditioning. And, right. You know, you're not necessarily trying to lift the heaviest weight. You might be doing something for speed or exactly. form or technique or something exactly. like that. Exactly. Like yeah. a lot of people have seen agility ladders, for instance. <laughs> oh, yeah. But they don't know what to do with it. Like a rope ladder? Yeah, like a rope ladder. They don't yeah. know really what to do with it. 
it was first designed for a lot of athletes. It's now starting to become, you know, a lot of the strength and conditioning stuff is starting to become yeah. um, very popular with the average person. Right. But it's how you it's how you design the program based around it. So, uh, for football players, let's say their off season is I don't know, let's say four months long. One month of it is getting back into the gym. Two months of it is pure strength and conditioning. The last month is pure speed. Let's say, for example, mm-hmm. it could be different. It's different with every athlete. However, that's the that's the average, right? Right. For a regular person, we can implement the same exercises, but they're over, let's say, a six month program or a twelve month program, where they don't really have a deadline as to when to get this. Right. Keep in mind, goal setting is huge with everybody. So right. they might only have six months, but it's going to be different. They're going to spend more time trying to lose the weight or trying to tone down than an average football player would. So, and their meal plans are completely different because of the activities that they do and stuff like that. So, um, same exercises you can implement, but just the way that they do it is completely different. The speed of how they do it. Mm -hmm. So people can bench press, but, um, the speed of the bench press, let's say could be different. If you're doing for power, you're going to try to get that weight up as fast as you can. But if you're doing it to kind of build strength and stuff like that, the bar is slower. So right there's a lot of differences between it exercises might be similar but a lot of differences so it, it's a it's a training technique but almost a different modality if you will like right. a, another uh a paradigm style and right. uh, and and form has to be truly important the goal setting i find is even more important maybe because it's time sensitive you got these yeah. off-season guys that got to do you know improve their weak spots exactly right like sooner than later Exactly. There and I find when you work on that premise where the productivity is the goal, the body, the look of the body comes with Not that. True. Yeah, but when you try too hard to just change your body, it's like wanting it too much gets in your way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, for sure. Like, like for fighters, we, you know, you have a deadline as to when you got to cut weight. Mm-hmm. Um, but none of them ever care what they look like. It's always that number on the scale. Always. Yeah. Take, for example, some of the heavyweights in the UFC, like Big Country. He doesn't care what he looks like. Right. He loves it. He loves the way he looks. Which is why he stays in the highest right. weight class. Right. Because he loves the way he looks. But just to compliment what you're saying is, is that they don't care how they look, but if you notice, they're all shredded. Right. But that just comes with the training and the diet that they're doing. That's right. it. That's all it is. Can You've been through that. Can you yep. tell us what it's like to cut weight? What what it entail? <laughs> How'd you feel? Oh, my God. <laughs> the feeling, The feeling of it... It's hit or miss. Sometimes you can cut weight and you just feel like... What's the most you've had to cut? For for a competition? Like for a fight? Yeah. Even over a longer period of time. I've lost probably the last one. Oh, no. I lost 40 pounds once. Um, wow. So I went from... When I first became a trainer, I lost... I was like at two... I was at like 200 and I ended up going down to like 160. So... Uh-huh. Um... Yeah, so, trust me, I was in shape, just not a good shape. Right. It was like a pear shape. Did you feel like you were at the peak of your fitness when you lost it, or did you feel like you had to rejuvenate? Sorry, I was 210, and I dropped down to 170. Okay. Most recently, I went from 170 down to 148. Wow. That was my most so recent. Joel, Joel, all in all, has probably lost about 60 to 65 pounds or so. Yeah, I would say so. Um, Over now, the course, I would say, in what, two and a half, three years yeah, at least? About yeah, about that. So, Healthily, I took my time. Yeah. And steadily, and, and he's he's evolved his body, because once you lose a ton of weight, your body's not going to be right where you want it to be. You're probably going to want to build up your tone. For sure. Your muscle mass, again. So For sure. You even then have to look at it like a sculpture. Yeah, not... And you know what? Not everybody can diet for all year round, right? That's like, right. You have yeah. to, like, everybody's Even human. within that, yeah. Everybody's human. So, you know, I, t- I encourage clients to have their cheat meal just to keep you sane, right? Right. And, um, all that stuff. But the hardest, I think the hardest cut I had to make was when I was 170 down to 159. That okay. was the hardest cut I lost. So that was less weight than you you needed to before, but it was harder. In less time. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I ended up losing nine pounds in two hours in a sauna. Wow. Yeah. And that was probably the hardest weight cut I ever had to do. Right now, I dropped a whole weight class. Um, This past weight cut was tough, too, because I only had two weeks to lose 15. Right. But that one was nine pounds in like two hours. So is it fair to say once you get used to doing it, it it does get easier? Mentally. 
mentally. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. The diets are still hard. Yeah. A lot of fighters, it's like clockwork for them. Sure. It's They're like at a professional level. Yeah. Now, so. It's just clockwork. Like I'm talking. Yeah. They do it. It's they're robots. Right. They have their they have their routine. They wake up. They eat their their first meal. They, they're on their way to the gym. They have a coffee. They get to the gym. They eat their second meal. They train. They eat their third meal. They train some more. They eat their fourth meal. They go home, take a nap, go back. Fifth meal, and then they train again. And sixth meal. That's exactly every day. Right. For, I would say like two months. Right. Like the clockwork. Like they're robots. Right. For me, on the other hand, I'm more like I can eat, train, eat. I, I'm along the same lines. But never do I feel like a robot. I always feel like, okay, when's this going to, like, I got to, like, <laughs> like, hurry up. I got to get this, like, I just want to, I, mentally, I want to fight two weeks before the actual fight. That's how, that's right. That's when I want to get it done. I'm like, okay, I'm oh, okay. I just want this over and done with. Let's do this. Let's do this tournament. Um, let me take home some hardware and just so I can go and eat a normal meal now. <laughs> so you, you know, can't wait. Yeah. I just can't wait. I just, uh, it takes, it does take a lot out of you, but a lot of guys are just, ready to go yeah so now i just try to stay about 10 pounds five seven to ten pounds over my weight class so mm-hmm. that way i only have to lose five to five to seven power yeah seven to ten, there's so few seven. guys on the professional at the ufc level that i think there's only one or two guys that stay at the same weight and fight in that weight class yeah. and there's some guys that lose 20 to 30 pounds to cut, yeah. cut weight over yeah. the course not just the camp like Narrowing down to the weight. Fellow Canadian, uh, who's recently retired, Mark Hominick, he he stays at his weight class all year, all the time, all year round. Tremendous talent, fight ready, fight ready. Yeah, Joel Joel's had uh, quite an extensive um, experience meeting some uh, fighters. I'm going to ask you to name drop. Who are the who are the uh, the ones that you've met? And I have to say that Joel speaks so highly of them, and I can just you know I just they look like tremendous people too, like really good guys. Um, um, who have I... It's a tight-knit community, isn't it? Very tight-knit. It's, it's such a small community. A lot of these athletes um, started out 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when it was, you know, kind of still a taboo. Backyard backyard brawling is what yeah, it was. Yeah, or fighting on the reserves. Yeah, something. stuff like yeah. that. So they're very humble because they know that if it wasn't for their loyal fans that they wouldn't be where they are now. And it's right. true. It is 100% true. A lot of them do believe that still. So mm-hmm. um, I've had... The pleasure of training with guys such as uh, Mark Hominick, Sam Stout. Um, and Sam and Mark are in London, Ontario. London, Ontario, yeah. What's the name of their gym? Adrenaline Fight Center. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, Adre- yeah. Adrenaline Training Center, ATC. Right on. Oh, uh, awesome guys. Yeah. I've actually had the pleasure of training them a couple times. When I first m- lived in London uh, and left playing football, I decided to try something new and I want to try kickboxing and learn what this whole MMA thing is. I didn't know. I was kind of interested in it, but at the same time, kind of scared, <laughs> didn't know what to do. So I went by their club and I don't know if Mark knows the story, but I went by their club. I want to try a class. So they threw me gloves and hand wraps. I don't know how to wrap my hands. <laughs> you know, what yeah. I didn't know what I was doing with these things. Like, right. do I wear shoes? Like, what do I do? Like, yeah. Mark pulls me over. He's like, here, buddy, I'll do them for you. I didn't know who the guy was at the time. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, I find, I'm find i watching him on TV, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's the guy that wrapped my hands. Yeah. yeah. And then so since then, you know, I've gone by and said hi and trained with those guys again yep. um, after that. And those guys are awesome guys, but yeah. um, who else have I trained with? I've trained with Josh Hill, who was on The Ultimate Fighter this past season, who's a fellow Canadian, Hamiltonian, yep. too. Yeah. Um, Looking forward to meeting Josh. Yep. Tremendous. Yep. Um, who else is there? I've trained with Damian Maya. I've trained. I've met uh, Rashad Evans, Clay Gita, Kane Velasquez. He's a funny guy. He likes to crack jokes. Um, Axe Murderer. Vanderlei a couple times. He's a funny guy too because he's got such a thick accent that everyone just nods and smiles at him because no one understands <laughs> what he says. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, Bruce Buffer, VOTC, yes, Voice of the right. Octagon. We talked about or earlier. VOTO, sorry. Yeah, thank you for that book. It's amazing, yeah, by the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. That, that guy's story, if you guys ever get a chance, get that book. Yeah, grab um, the book, Voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. It's an amazing story. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Kenny Florian. I've met uh, Shogun Hua, another funny guy. He's, uh, that, that guy just, that, that guy's just all over the place. He's just, 
he sits back and, and soaks it all up. When uh-huh. that guy, when that guy, he knows, he knows. Try, he's one of those guys that just knows. You know, he just knows who he is, and he just knows yeah. what he's capable of in the ring and with the women. I believe <laughs> that guy. No, and I don't. I don't have any stories. And anybody listening, I'm not saying that the guy's a woman. I'm saying though, the guy has the persona. So when women are shouting his name, Shogun, Shogun. He just smiles and winks. And I'm like, that guy's the man. It's the he Brazilian, knows. It's the Brazilian charm. It is. He knows that guy's the it's one. Embedded. Who, that guy's one of those guys that yeah. knows. Anthony Bourdain was quoted as saying that people in Brazil look like they're either on their way to getting laid or just coming home from getting laid. It's true. <laughs> that guy. That guy can be like that. That guy. That guy can just wink at a girl and that's it. And he knows. So that's what I'm saying. I don't have any stories. I'm not calling the guy a womanizer. I'm just saying that that guy knows. He, he does well with the ladies. The, I'm sure he does because that guy just has a look, you know? Like, yeah. he'll just look at a girl. I was When I was with him, it was at the UFC Fan Expo, and he was at a, at a booth I was at signing, and I was doing a little bit of crowd control. And if anybody has ever saw me, everybody knows that I can't do crowd control. <laughs> so um, I'm sitting there beside him making sure that everyone's keeping in line, you know, keeping the peace. And he would just like look over and wink at a girl, and these girls like, "Oh my god!" And I'm like, "Oh, it's man, over. It's over." <laughs> One of my funnest ones was Ronda Rousey. I met her. Yes, and I, I had wanted to ask you about your uh, your infatuation with Rowdy um, Ronda Rousey, and you have yeah. picture with her and everything. I have yeah. pictures with her. Joel's uh, in love with Ronda. I am. So I need not ask you who's going to win 168 between her and the cupcake Misha Tate. Okay, hold on. Obviously, Neil and I haven't talked about this in a little while. Love the girl to death. However, her attitude on the tough kind of like... I was like, what's her problem? Was it because of the show, though? I think their honest hatred for each other is huge. I really do. Okay. I you really can't fake do. that. That's no, true. you can't fake that. Yeah. But I think that there's something about her that I'm just like, what's your problem? Like, why are you so mad? Like, what did... Did somebody do something? Like, what did Misha really do to you? Like, really, though? Like... She just, all, she just became this whiny little girl. And however, do, hold on. If I ever meet Ronda again, my attitude will change because I love. I still <laughs> I love her. Doesn't hear this now. I still love her. Don't get me wrong. You ruined it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you I know. ruined your chance with her. I, I still love her to death, and I, you know, she's she's wicked. But seeing her in person, I was like, oh, Ronda. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's she's a really nice girl. She's she's super cool. Yeah. Uh, I've met Brian Stan. I've met uh, Frank Edgar. Yeah, yeah. Right so, Frank has tremendous talent, too. He's so good. He's such a nice guy. So, nice. And he's like... It's great to hear. He's a pure um, Martial New artist. Jersey boy. No, New Jersey, New Jersey boy. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Big accent. All he wants to do is just eat and pasta and <laughs> talks like, ew, ew. Like, the, he's like, a, you know what? He's a he's a stand-up guy, is what they call him in New Jersey. He's a good fella. Absolutely. He so, he, totally. He's, That's awesome. He's wicked. Now, Joel's had the opportunity to meet them not only like as a, a mixed martial artist uh, fan and participant, but Joel comes from the um, fitness industry. So I want to ask you about supplementation. And yeah. If someone's looking to supplement their day-to-day eating, mm-hmm. where can they start? And, and you know, when you first started out, what did you see the changes were in the industry? Where is it? What direction is it going in? Because I think that coincides with the weights like yeah people would think you know supplementation they think steroids or yeah it's true growth um, hormone or something and what's it going to do to me and there's a lot of myths about the effects yeah. right i think that where people need to start is is truthfully like when you're a kid those flintstone vitamins i think that everybody should be on a multivitamin number one okay number one because the foods that we eat now weren't like the foods back then where we need to get are pure uh, vitamins and minerals. Like when we cook food, we're actually extracting vitamins and minerals from the actual raw food. Mm-hmm. Okay. So vitamins and minerals are number one. Number two, I think that you got to maintain your protein intake because protein's a macronutrient like fats and carbs are. You, your body feeds off of that. And I think that you really got to take a look at your protein intake. And I think number three that a lot of people are missing and they kind of hear the catchphrase of fish oils. I think that fish oils is a big thing too because – not only does it help fuel the brain, but also helps lubricate joints, prevents injuries, helps burn body fat. So I think that those are the number three, number um, the three biggest ones. I mean, so where's the industry going? Quite frankly, I think it's going into like all natural, raw, vegan, vegetarian, back to like the source, like the. That's actual. so interesting. I really do. I really yeah. do. If you look at a lot of studies, 
if you look at a lot of supplements, they're going green. Like it's, they're going it's like it's coming full circle, right? It is. It totally is. I think a lot of supplements, especially with athletes, that they look at, you know, eat as many greens as you can. Look at how many su- green supplements are on the are on the market now, and a lot of proteins now are starting to go away from or are starting to do, add additives, and it's starting to become like you know soy protein, brown rice protein, uh, vegetable protein, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I really think that a big push is going to be towards all natural, raw, vegan, vegetarian sort of. We're certainly know. becoming more conscious of it in yeah. the public now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of the pre-workout stuff, right. if you look, it's going to be simple like six ingredients. That's it. And every and all those six ingredients are going to be listed. Right. And it's happened. Like if you look, there was this big push for concentrate pre-workout. Now concentrate pre-workout, guys, is basically six ingredients as pure form as you can get it. Yeah. So caffeine, creatine, um, tyrosine, amino acids, stuff like that. But that's all that's on the label. That's it. That's all. That's what you get. That's a concentrate formula, but even those are starting to die down. The reason is because you don't see like supplements with 80, 90 ingredients as much as you used to before. Right. 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 Because the people are scared to see, to, to like, you know, take what they don't know. Right. Do you believe someone can have the complete meal plan, uh, have a good lifestyle, just eating natural foods or supplementation has to come in somewhere? I think it does. I think that there's a little bit of both. I think that supplementation does have to come at some point. I'm not saying don't be that guy that, you know, GNC's best friend and starts dropping three, four hundred dollars a month. I don't think that's necessary. Mm -hmm. But I think that some supplementation is necessary. Like, for instance, I know a lot of guys that take, or including myself, amino acids. Now, amino acids is found in protein, but it helps to repair, to fuel the brain. It helps with all that stuff. So I really think that's important. I really think multivitamins are important. I really think that there are supplements that I take daily that I think is important. Dieting or not dieting, exercising or not exercising. I think that the food that we eat isn't the same. I think that, you know, um, it's not as organic. If you look now at some vegetables, let's say you go to your local grocery store and you look at vegetables, a head of lettuce could be 90 cents. An organic head of lettuce could be two bucks. Now, why is that? Yeah. Right? It's because organic is much more pure. It's harder to get without it being sprayed or, you know, anything like that. Yep. So, and I think that the big cost of it is because Health Canada likes to regulate their organics. In order for you to call it organic, you have to follow a Canadian guideline. Right. Um, but organics became a big thing, and I think that's where the supplements are going, mm-hmm. is become organic, raw, no additives, stuff like that. So, um, you go to your local sports supplement store, you can even buy a single ingredient like caffeine and tyrosine and taurine and... All the ingredients that make up a good pre-workout, you can buy individually because people want to know. Right. I think that that's where the industry is going. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So Joel has officially now become our in-house nutrition and fitness expert, bringing wealth and knowledge. So (laughs) I didn't sign anything. Don't be afraid to chime in. Uh, Joel, let us know what website we can check you out at. I will. It's actually being done right now. It's www.highoctanetraining, H-I-O-C-T-A-N-E. Training, T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G dot com. It's actually being built right now. So if you click on that, it probably said go daddy. But it's, it's, it's currently being done for the new year. No problem. And we're going to have a link as well as at the, the nobodies uh, dot com to uh, check out more from Joel. I want to thank you for coming in. But before you go, yeah. uh, I want to ask you some quick questions just to go. Sure. Like, no, about speed. Is this a little problem? personal? So yeah, we'll do like a, a, a quick speed uh, Thing, one one or two words. Hold on, I, yeah. I'm a big fan of the podcast now. Okay, I'm gonna be like Chael. now. He's I'm, he's a big fan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay, be, I'm gonna be like a Chael Son in here. I'm gonna, speak <laughs> up, I'm gonna speak up my opinion of my. <laughs> Listen, I I'm a fan, and I heard the podcast from from I don't know when it was, but you had Nelson and Neil talking, or sorry, Nelson and Chris talking about um, <laughs> soccer. Yeah, yeah, we we get heated here. What is what? <laughs> Chris talking about? <laughs> Hold on. When did this guy become a pro in soccer and all of a sudden he doesn't like he it? Said, he said he played 10 years of, you know, pop, like, uh, registration soccer. Really? So, as a kid. Really? So, does, but does Xbox count? Like, I don't understand. Like, this guy, Nelson, I, and you know what? Nelson, I get, you know, he, he seems, you know, I've, I've had a couple conversations with him. He seems, he seems like a really nice guy. 
but you had this guy named Chris on. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, really, though? <laughs> this guy This guy was so opinionated. I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> first, he, first, he loved... Um, um, oh, my God. First, he loved soccer. Then he doesn't. Then he likes uh, Paul Walker. Then he doesn't. Like, what's this guy talking about? <laughs> By the way, that discussion about Paul Walker a couple weeks ago... Um, just to say, he was a fellow Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner and student, and he was given his honorary black belt by his professor at his at his site. That's at amazing. Didn't site. even know that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so for Chris, for I don't understand what that guy's talking about. I don't know if it's he's just in front of the camera or not or <laughs> behind the mic, but but I don't know what that guy was talking about. Friendly competition. We respect everyone's opinions here, so yes, that yes. try again. Yes, I and, and you know what? That's just strictly an opinion. That's what. <laughs> You might get crazy ratings from this guy named Chris, and who knows? I might have just dropped the ball. On your <laughs> no, I don't think. I don't so. know. Yeah. I don't know, right? So no, our guys are loyal, and they're going to tune in because uh, they love the laughs. They like the inspiration, and mm-hmm. we like meeting uh, guys like yourself. You know what? Are out here to make a change and touch people's lives. You know that. That's why we do this because we enjoy it. And we just want to bring people together, man. We're going to keep throwing them at you, bringing some cool guests and then some interesting things along, interesting things along the way, and that's. That's all we can ask. Will for. this end up being like a Howard Stern? No, we're not. We're not. We're not going for shock value. I'm out. I'm out. Right? I'm out. <laughs> I'm I'm out. out. I want to see. I want. I want. I, I want you to book Jenna. <laughs> yeah, I want you to book Jenna right. sitting on sit, sitting on a speaker. We're not going in that in that direction. <laughs> Anyways, speed round. Quick okay. questions for you, okay? Um, if when you're dieting um, on these free meals, earned meals that you take, what's your uh, favorite thing to have? Cheat meal. Yep. Uh, pad Thai, Thai food, <laughs> for sure. Pad Thai. Anywhere in particular? Sushi, sushi too. Anywhere in particular? Um, Ben Ten, downtown Hamilton. Okay. Best spot in the world. Right on. I need the sponsorships. Original. I'm looking for sponsorships. The original. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, what's uh, on your iPod right now? Um, right now it is. What's my favorite song on there right now that I'm listening to? Jay Z. Yeah, what's yeah. on Magna Carta, Holy yeah. Grail? Yeah, both. Right on. Awesome. Tom Ford. Uh, let's see here. What chores do you absolutely hate doing? Dishes. D- oh my god. <laughs> I will do put my dishwasher on three times a day. I don't care. Okay. There should be three dishes in there. I'll put it on. I hate dishes <laughs> by far. Dishes. Favorite time of the year? Favorite season? Favorite holiday? Summer. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Christmas for sure. Yeah, for sure. This Christmas is- shopping done. No, everyone's everyone's getting. Everyone's getting free personal training. <laughs> Everybody. Okay, right on. And uh, Joel is available and single, by the way. So <laughs> I want to ask you, what it, uh, what do you like? What do you look for in a, in a girl? Wow. Um, I would say great personality, but come on, really? Come, come on. on, don't be boring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, No, honestly, hold a great conversation. That's number one because. Um, as you can tell, I like to talk. And yeah. if Will you I let her talk? talk? <laughs> oh, yeah. I prefer it, actually. Uh-huh. Um, great conversation. Same interest as me, so fitness. Um, you know, uh, loves to learn, stuff like that. Um, short, so tall ladies, I'm sorry. But, yeah, <laughs> short and, and you know, wants to have a good personality and great head on their shoulders. Yeah. Needy need not apply. Needy, needy, okay. All needy, right. High need maintenance not need not no, apply. Because he apply. Joel's already got that. Um, <laughs> all right, so all you uh, sexy listeners out there, <laughs> don't be afraid to get in t- a contact with us. Let us put you and connect you with Joel. <laughs> <laughs> great, I did, great. This is like this is like what is this, like the like the dating game. It's a love connection. Yeah. What celebrity have you been mistaken for? <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, BJ, BJ Penn. Penn. BJ yeah. Penn's number one. There you go. Yeah, BJ get, Penn. get a, a visual. And uh, if someone were to write an autobiography of your life, what, what would you want the title to be? Adversity. I love it. Just that word. You That's talked it. about having that uh, tatted up one time. Yeah, I think I yeah. did it on my back. Tremendous. Yeah. Right on. So uh, definitely that adversity. If, I think I've, we have all faced it in our lives, and I've just more embraced it more than others, I guess. Absolutely. So. Yeah, yeah, you have. Yeah, yeah, you have. You're doing great things, brother. Thank Love you. it. Appreciate Glad it. to have you on. Appreciate Our official it. fitness and nutrition expert, Joel. Joel G. from HighOctaneTraining.com. Check it out. Check our website. 
thenobodies.com and uh, you know the special edition bringing it live to you and uh, keep tuning in guys we love you and uh, ciao we'll see you at the next one Okay.